Hello, this is Brian Rowe with my first top 9 list for Mythic MTG Tech. I'm going over the top 9 cards that will have an impact from Avacyn Restored. First card that I'm going to cover here is one that I wasn't originally planning on, but the price of it has just shot up so much since the pre-release that I think that I have to cover it. It's Vexing Devil. Vexing Devil for one red, it puts a 4-3 creature in play, although your opponent can take 4 damage, forcing you to sacrifice him. This is known as a Punisher mechanic. It puts a player in a difficult situation as they have to make a choice between either dealing with a very large creature for a 1-caster or taking damage. At first glance, this looks amazing because 4 damage for 1 red is better than a Lightning Bolt, one of the best cards out there for 1 red casting cost, and a 4-3 creature is just amazing. The problem with this card is that your opponent is always going to choose whatever is best for them. Late game, this guy doesn't have any opportunity to get through, and early game, if they don't have a way to deal with him, they're all always going to take 4 damage. Now with that being said, this card is going to show up in a lot of deck lists. The price has jumped up to about $16, $17-$18 already in the first week of Avacyn being out, and I want to help you be a little bit prepared for this card. The best card in the current environment to deal with it is this card, Timely Reinforcements. If you have six if you have less life than an opponent, you gain six life. If your opponent controls fewer creature, if you control fewer creatures than an opponent, put three one one white soldier tokens in onto the battlefield. Most of the decks that are gonna run Vexing Devils are also gonna run other creatures. So you're likely to have taken four damage early to get rid of the devil, and they'll have a creature or two in play which increases the utility of timely reinforcements. I'm considering main decking one or two of these in my uh, Super Friends deck, Esper, and even though I'm already playing for Lingering Souls, because this one card, timely reinforcements, negates one and a half Vexing Devils and gives you three chump blockers for those really fast, uh, aggressive decks. So watch out for Vexing Devils and strongly consider Timely Reinforcements in your sideboard, if not possibly even your main board if a lot of people around you are in the tournament scene are playing Vexing Devils. Next card I'm going to cover is one that not many people have focused on. It's Descendant's Path for two colorless and one green. It's an enchantment that at the beginning of your upkeep reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card that shares a creature type, with a creature you control, you may cast it from hand, otherwise, without paying its mana cost, otherwise put that card on the bottom of your library. It has great utility late game. If you run into lands that you don't need, you're able to put those on the bottom of your library. Early game, it may combo extremely well with some smaller angels and giant angels, or even in legacy or older environments with a Muda Vault and being able to put pretty much anything in play especially in an environment where you can put cards from your hand back on top of your library, or you can rearrange cards via something like Sylvan Library. Now, I don't think this is anywhere near as broken as something as survival of the fittest, but it has the potential to be a decent combo deck. It is incredible in EDH, and also very useful in the standard environment, so watch out for this card. I it's going to add a lot of fun to several different play styles and is a good balanced card overall. The next card I'm covering is Restoration Angel. Restoration Angel is one of the best cards in the set by far. The 3-4 flyer for 4 is not bad. Adding on the ability of Flash so you can cast it on your opponent's turn and block one of their attacking creatures is amazing, but beyond that, that it has another ability, an ability that allows you to abuse, comes into play effects, or save your own creatures. The When Restoration Angel enters the battlefield, you may excise, exile, not excise, target non-angel creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under your control, allows for a significantly large number of tricks to be played, it comes into play effects that gain life against burn decks will be extremely useful 
a clean white deck with mana acceleration, being able to return your acidic slime has incredible utility. At worst case, you're removing lands. At best case, you're killing their swords. This card is going to see a lot of play in the current environment and also extremely fun in EDH where the comes into play effects, uh, where you have many more options for comes into play effects. I actually plan on trying this in a control deck in the standard environment also. I'll post a deck list to that later if I can make it work. Next card I'm covering is Thunderous Wrath. This card is likely to be played in all formats as a one of or two of in a burn deck. If the deck also has brainstorms or a way to put things back on top of the deck or ponders to reorder the deck, five damage is just incredible for one red. The alternative casting cost of, or the normal casting cost of six, the non-miracle cost, seems extremely high, but five damage in red for one red is just incredible. This is a much better card than Vexing Devil, and I, this is what makes red deck wins and red decks overall extremely threatening in the standard environment and increases their punch and late game reach in pretty much any environment out there. Next card that I've got up here is Temporal Master. I'm very divided in having this card on the list. A lot of people have talked about it. I've worked really hard to try to break this card in Legacy. I tried playing it in Rug, Red, Blue, Green Delver last week at a Legacy tournament, the first one in Seattle area where Avacyn cards were legal. That deck went 301, but it was despite having Temporal Masteries in the deck. Every time that I got this in an opening hand, it was very difficult, even with brainstorms, to correctly manipulate it. And in that particular deck, it usually only ended up netting me an additional three points of damage with a Delver for an extra attack. Ideally, I think this can be abused in either a combo deck that really needs that extra turn to drop a land, or in a much more aggressive creature deck, something with Goblin Guides and Delvers, maybe even Goists that you're attacking with two or three creatures, then that extra attack phase brings the end of the game closer. Now, this can also be pitched to Force of Will, so it's not an entirely dead card in Legacy, but in Modern, I don't think this card is going to see much play. And in Standard, I've been playtesting with it, and it's very difficult to make it work, because it's just a dead card out of your opening hand. Uh, a lot of people are going to try to break this card. I do believe there is a way to break it in Legacy, but I have not found it yet, so watch out for it. Also, the miracle mechanic, you need to be careful of how you draw cards, because it really alters the way that people interact with the game. And Treat the Angels has shot up from a $5 card in the last week to a $15, $20, $25 card, depending on where you look. I think a lot of this is the hype from pre-release, in pre-release and limited, this is an incredible bond. You basically win once you cast this card anytime after turn three. I've been testing this in Super Friends Esper as a win condition or a stabilizing card, and it has an extremely large amount of potential. It's very difficult pulling it out of here in your opening hand because the five casting cost does not work extremely well. You'd much rather have a board wipe. There's no way in standard to put it back on top of your deck. I don't think it's playable in Legacy, but when you draw this third, fourth, fifth, sixth turn, it completely turns the game around. It also adds a lot of stress to the game. You are waiting for this card or very unhappy with this card. I've tried playing it with Think Twices in the deck, and I pulled it twice off of a Think Twice, and it wasn't the first card of the turn because I needed to get to a board wipe hoping to pull Terminus. So, uh, thus, I'm very divided over this card. I love the explosive wins, but it may not be viable in a deck where you really need the consistent, powerful control as more than a one of or two of. On the other hand, Tammy of the Moon 
Dragon Sage. I'm also playing in my Super Friends Asper deck, which there's a link to in the uh, tapped out. Is incredible. This deck come this card combos extremely well with Gideon. Drop Gideon first, make all of your opponent's creatures attack. Gideon, if Gideon survives, you can easily use the minus two to draw a bunch of cards early on and make them attack Gideon again. Even as a control card, this is extremely useful. I'm playing Terminuses in that same deck and also playing Day of Judgment. After board wiping, my opponent usually has one or two threats at most. Tapping that threat down permanently and getting towards the ultimate is extremely useful. The five casting cost means that the spell is pretty balanced at this point, although it might be a little bit over the top for power. I need to play test it in a few tournaments a bit more, but I'm extremely happy with this card. So it's one of the absolute best cards in the set. Next one that I have here, I think a lot of people are really underestimating how good a one miracle cost is. I've been playtesting Terminus in two different control decks, and this card is just beautiful. Often having it in my opening hand with the right small removal suite is extremely useful. The six casting cost is nowhere near as bad as it appears. Yes, it's slower than Day of Judgment, but if you've got one or two small creature removals, it is easily castable in a 24, 25, 26 land deck with a little bit of draw, and the Miracle just is incredible. With Ponder to set it up, it crushes zombies, it crushes humans and token decks. I'm extremely happy with this card. Every game that I have played with it, I've been happy to have it. This card will easily become one of the more valuable rares in the set. It's also just wonderful in EDH. It's a hollowed burial with two different casting costs, and the Miracle allows you to override the sorcery portion of it if you draw it during your opponent's turn. I've set this up with Ponder and Think twice to wipe my opponent's creatures during the attack phase after they have activated their Ink Moth Nexus. Just a beautiful play overall. Look forward to playing this in pretty much every format that I can except Legacy where the six casting cost is a little too high last card that I'm covering today is Cavern of Souls. I uh, picked up a play set of these and tried them in several different decks so far. The fact that there's no real drawback to this card makes it better than Dual Lands in several decks. The tribal drawback is not really a drawback at all. Many of the best creatures share the same tribe. Delver of Secrets, Snapcaster, Mage and Dark Confident are all wizards and all humans. Vendillion Click is also a wizard. In Legacy, this gives you a really nice punch in against control decks and counterbalance. It also makes some of the tribal decks more viable against control in Legacy. In Modern and in Standard, it crushes Mana Leak along with Dissipate. This card was theoretically designed to slow down or stop Snapcaster, and I think that it does the opposite. It makes Snapcaster uncounterable and gives some more reach to the spells that Snapcaster is flashing back. This is the biggest impact across the board for all formats. It's also just wonderful to have an EDH, even if you don't have a tribal deck. With a few bounce lands, you can return it when you need to put it out and get around that annoying blue mage that's trying to control the deck, trying to control the board or stop your deck. I'm extremely happy with this card and it is on my always trade for list. Thank you. This was Brian Rowe. Please feel free to contact me at, on Twitter at Sartorus for Mythic MTG Tech. And I would love any feedback or ideas on how to improve this or the other videos that I've been putting together lately. Thank you.